next year. So um, today it's going to be just about really understanding pad split, our model. Again, we do well and we do good. Um, Intra and alignment. If you know, hey, you're feeling that this is something you want to move forward with, we can then um, discuss about further some of our numbers and solutions. I will talk about some numbers now, but would love to, you know, schedule a follow up in the uh, next discussion and talk further about that in, in greater detail. Um, and then we also have a letter of intent. This letter of intent, it's non binding, it's not like a contract. There is no penalty or fees or anything like that. It's more so, I just call it like a virtual handshake. It just establishes our partnership and relationship. I can make introductions to our partners that we have. Um, now, our partners are going to be in the core markets. So, and I'm going to show you a map and where our core markets are. So, I don't know if we'll have resources in the areas that you're in, but you know, I'll do my best to uh, to reach out and connect you to those who who may you know could help us if needed. Um, so, as we talked about, we're the largest shared housing marketplace. I like to compare it to Airbnb, right? Short-term rentals were nothing new. Airbnb came in and they created a platform that worked and made it easy for investors to be able to operate at scale. It's always been the biggest issue with co-living and shared housing is like, how do you do this at scale? Um, so this is the map that we have of all of our active core markets currently, um, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Dallas, Houston, New Orleans, Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, and Richmond. We started in Atlanta, that's where we were founded. And then we have three markets that are coming on board now, Baltimore, Kansas City, Miami. And I believe we're also now working on Raleigh as well. We just had Pace Morby. He did like a kickoff event there with some of his group members from Sub2. Um, he's a huge, huge supporter of Pad Split. Um, and I feel like every day we're starting to hear more and more of these uh, kind of real estate in investor influencers that are, are hopping on board. Jesse Vasquez as well. He's like the midterm rental guy. He hopped on and uh, is, is, in, is a big fan as well. So um, our why, I mean, you guys see it yourself, right? There's a huge need. There's uh, millions of Americans who just don't have enough to be able to rent their own place. And so Pad Split is one of the solutions to that um, due to the access to homes that we have, our rooms, I'm sorry with that. Um, this just talks about how previous exit strategies don't work. And you know now it's created an opportunity for Pad Split, Pad Split to shine. And um, you know it, it, we look at We'll look at the layout and we're going to see, hey, where are some areas in this layout that we can potentially add a room? Again, one to increase your cash flow as these are being rented on a weekly basis with that minimum 31 day term. But also it's hedging your risk as an investor, because if you have, say, for example, one room that's vacant, you still have five other streams that are coming in and cash flow. Whereas if it's just the entire unit, that thing is sitting there, it's not earning you any money. Um, so I want to pause here. This kind of sometimes tends to bring up questions or would love to maybe just open it up to see if you guys have any questions regarding the, I do have, I do have one question. Where, where is, um, Pad Split, uh, originated from? Uh, yeah. So it started in Georgia, uh, out of Atlanta. We started in 2018. Uh, we have 15,000 members currently. Now we call them members. We don't call them tenants. And, and the reason that is, is because they don't have tenancy rights. And it's the way we structure the legal structure of a pad split, which we'll talk a little bit about later on, but, and, and kind of to keep things short and simple, we'll create an LLC. And then there's going to be a long-term lease agreement between pad split and the homeowner or their LLC for that property. And that's going to be the long-term lease agreement. And then the members, once they go through our background check, income verification, eviction report, and credit check, um, and they pass all those, then that's when they get um, the ability to book that room. They can see what's there, but they just can't book it until they're passed. And then they have to agree to a member's agreement. Um, and this member's agreement just states that, hey, you know, you are uh, being accepted as a member to this LLC. You are, are not establishing tenancy in this home. Um, if there, there's just a whole, like basically like the legal terms and conditions that they have to agree to, to be a part of this pad split. So once the residents are approved into pad split, they're like green letters. They're not specifically or necessarily uh, approved for a specific property. It's more for the program in general. Yeah. So yeah, right. They're approved to be able to book on our platform. So a couple of requirements that we have on our platform, we have to, um, they can't have had an eviction, what more than one eviction in the last seven years. And they also can't have had a fel felony in the last seven years. And their income has to be two times, whatever the weekly rental rate is. Um, so those are requirements. We do pull the credit check, but there's no kind of credit requirements. That's just more so to have more data on them. And then you as the host 
are going to be able to see their profile if they are interested in a room they send you an inquiry you can take a look at their um background checks and all the screens we've done and then you're also going to be able to see reviews from other hosts and members so just kind of like on airbnb when a guest stays at a place the host can rate the guest and the guest can rate the host but also in uh in pat split the members can rate other members um so if sal is eating bob sandwiches uh, sally can give him a you know a bad rating because he's just someone who's you know eats other people's food and so you get to see that as a host and uh, once they're approved, are they like so you, so you mentioned they can do week to week or month to month? Are they able to transfer their their uh, location once they're already like in approved and all green lighted? Like, say they're like a traveling nurse, they did like three months in one spot, and then they took like another job somewhere else. Could they transfer it to another place? Yep, yeah, okay. yeah, that's great. I, yeah, I was just actually talking with a, a woman who's interested in becoming an investor. He has she has about six properties, and she's plans to become a nomad. And she's like, shoot, I'm just going to become you know. Uh, part, a passive member myself and then as i'm kind of hopping around these places just rent the room so yeah that's something we do have like once you're approved for the platform and you can rent at other pad splits as well um and i'll talk about some of the benefits and incentives that we offer to members that you know drive that 98 percent collection rate um but it's more than just a room rental they, they there are some additional benefits with it as well and if they're terminated right say they're terminated for non-payment not only are they going to have to vacate the property that they're at, but then they're not going to be able to actually rent any other rooms on pad split. So again, that's another driver for good behavior because, hey, if they screw this up, now they've just closed out their options by, you know, 7,000 units that we have available now. Mm, I like that. Any other questions regarding this, um, this layout? So a couple, one thing I want to mention, the room requirements, right? What is it required for it to be considered a room? has to be at least 80 square feet that's per city and code regu uh, zoning regulations has to be at least 80 square feet there needs to be two points of egress and one of those points has to be to the outside of the home um, so that can either be a door or a window large enough for somebody to go through you know i once had a host who did like these little windows and i was like look can't can't do that you need to have full-size window, windows where people can go through as it's more of a safety requirement than anything, right? If something happens would, in the home, they gotta yeah. get Would you say, would you say that this, that this checklist is almost like section eight, like a deal? You, you, you know, you know how, how, how you gotta go, how they gotta go through the uh, section eight, uh, what is it, the inspection list? They gotta go through an inspection before the voucher can be able to rent? Yes, it's, it's, it's similar. You have, you can't have any blocked egresses and the person has to be able to get in and out yeah it's very similar okay yeah okay cool oh uh, with i think with an, an idea maybe you can help me here because i don't have a lot of section 8 experience but it's still just rentals to single families right it's not like room rentals right it it just depends on what the person's vouchers for now there are a lot of people with um with one bedroom vouchers that have um a really hard time finding somewhere to rent that's what mm. I'm saying. And do you think this would be? Do you think that there's a way to implement this for those specific vouchers to clean up that that voucher wait list? I'm I'm not a hundred percent certain. I would have to look at it and compare the rules and regulations to make sure that none of them overlap. If that makes sense. And that's a great answer. Well, we get. I like I like the fact that we're getting somewhere. We're getting right. somewhere. And that's the first time i've had that question come up i didn't realize section 8 vouchers could be used for bedrooms as well um so i'll take that back to the team i'll, I'll note that down as a follow-up for my end and figure out how that works um if that's something i do know with like ssi if they have ssi uh their ssi has to be uh i think it's two two thirds something oh man i gotta go back and see because typically it's they have to it's half of whatever they're making is what they get approved for whereas if it's ssi it's two-thirds that they would get approved for i believe um but i'll double ch i'll double check on that one as well yeah, let's, all, let's, let's all hold each other accountable for understanding for, for kind of connecting that dot somewhere in the future yeah yeah we have it within our knowledge base and i'll go in there and take a look it's something that hasn't come up in a bit of time so but i'll verify that for you um so two points of egress are required. Uh, if you do have a door on the outside, right, that's gonna be considered then a premium room because now they have a private entrance that they can come from. 
Um, typically, premium rooms, you can charge anywhere from about 15 to 25% more. Um, if it has a private bathroom, that's again, another premium room. Um, same rule applies. And if it's both, right, if it both has a private entrance and a bathroom, then you can charge anywhere from about 20 to 50% more. So I'm not sure if that's going to apply in this case, but just want you to kind of think about when you were saying like building out these homes, right. potentially that could be something you could think about having a premium room. Mm. Yeah. Um, so two points of egress, uh, 80 square feet. There also has to be an AC vent or a mini split or some kind of AC ventilation in the room. Uh, we don't allow window units. It's more of a security issue. So um, I'm not sure how do these units work. Do they have like some kind of central? Now, now, now we getting into now we getting into the must to the gristle. We're getting into it now. Yeah, yeah man. Oh so, yeah, most of the time, um, some of them do have central. You know, of course, if it's brand new, it's gonna have all those smart new works. You know, we all know that. But if we run into a part like what Tom got. And they got this one that been vacant with these 70s and 80s homes we might have to go through and put a whole new hvac system or a central heat, central air system in that thing because i know some of them still got the furnaces in it um what i've been doing is putting the baseboards down um for heat and then doing um you know air conditioning units for uh the windows but like mm. you said, it got to be that egress for them rooms and you know especially if you're trying to get a premium room i'm me honestly though I feel like now, I mean, if, if understanding that, it makes sense to just put that in the budget now. Like, hey, you need to make sure you got essential heating in there. It's yeah. Like, um, even if you got to go spend the five, eight thousand dollars, you need to go do it because uh, I mean, you're gonna have to, you'll get it back for sure. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to take a look at the numbers and see potentially what you could rent each room at, and just see when is going to be your return on capital, right? How how long are you have to stay in this investment? before you start, you know, profiting for that additional cost. Um, but I would definitely recommend, you know, going forward, keeping that in mind. Um, and then I think even in case like, hey, if it, you have to convert it back to a standard rental, now it's still worth more because it has now a central HVAC system. So it's one of those investments, because sometimes what I'll run into here locally is like, they need to add a bathroom, but where they're gonna add a bathroom, it doesn't make sense, right? If they converted back to a single family rental. So that's something I always kind of want to keep in mind. Um, now our requirement is, and it's not going to apply in this case, but just so you know, it's, uh, for every four bedrooms, there needs to be one bathroom. Okay. So, um, and then with bathrooms, uh, we recommend just having a standing shower just to keep your utility expenses lower because, and also members spending less time in, in that bathroom with it being a standing shower. Um, and then as far as with the HVAC system, having like a smart thermostat, something that's lockable, that's huge, man. So that way you can remotely control it. And then every bedroom has to have Wi-Fi enabled smart locks on it. So that's something I want to make you aware of. Now you can do punch locks if you want, but just remember, just keep in mind now that, you know, you're not going to be able to change the codes uh, remotely. So um, just something to think about if you decide to go kind of the punch code route. Um, that you know that's going to be the same or you could have somebody manually go in there and, and, and set a new code with the punch code up to you all right mm -hmm. yeah i saw i saw where you guys got the affiliate link at the bottom for people to buy everything that they that you feel like they need to be able to make stuff uh run smooth so that's right yeah we have like our inventory list so you can buy everything there and you know basically furnish what you need in your pad split um, so any other questions regarding the layout, the conversion process, how this works with PadSplit? No? Okay, cool. Uh, so we're just going to move on talking about some of those additional benefits that members get versus a standard room rental. So as we talked about, private lockable bedroom, they get access to common areas like kitchen and laundry room. Now, I want to talk about that laundry room. How how does that work? Does it, is there like a area in the community for laundry or? No, um, so what I I mean, from my understanding, from what I've been seeing is uh, a lot, some of them will get a washer and dryer. They be having them in there. I just helped a, a tenant move a, a washer and dryer in his unit. And then some people, um, they won't do that. They'll just go to the uh, laundromat down the street. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind because when we market these properties, we'll, we, we market them as having uh, washer and dryers. Now, we are adding Baltimore as a core market. A lot of units in Baltimore just don't have the space for a, a washer and dryer. And so 
we're kind of navigating that market in, in a unique way. Um, but in this case, because it's pad split anywhere, you know, it wouldn't fall in that standard core market requirement. So you'd ultimately as a host get to decide. I would definitely encourage like noting in the description of the listing if it has a washer and dryer or not. So people know before they before they move I, there. I definitely would. would, would, would yeah, would. that's huge. I think the, the biggest thing is just setting expectations, right? You want to be very transparent. So when people get there, they're not like, what the heck? Like, why did not they tell me that? That's that's been we've what we've seen the biggest issue uh, for like um, we call them emergency move outs where they you know they move out prior to the thirty one days is they just there wasn't proper expectation set for the members with before arriving there. Um, mm -hmm. So just be very clear and transparent on that. Um, again, they'll have access to private or shared bathroom furnishings as well. So we only require standard furnishings, which includes uh, a bed frame with a mattress. Uh, some source of light in the room, either from the ceiling or a nightstand light or even a, a floor light, whatever works for uh, the configuration, and then a place to store clothes. So if it doesn't have a closet, it needs a dresser or an armoire, somewhere where they can store their clothes is going to be required. We encourage adding a desk, but it's up to you to decide. That's optional, and certainly not a requirement. But as you're running the numbers, want to kind of think about what that cost is going to be to furnish these places because that's going to be required you don't have to do bed sheets or any of that stuff because the members are going to bring their own um you will have to however do staging of the rooms and uh, now i'm thinking Wait. with you yeah go ahead adia yep i don't mean to interrupt but yep. um as far as our sanitation guidelines and pest control protocols yeah, so you as the homeowner are going to be responsible for pest control and lawn care. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something that you know is going to be have to be done. And um, what was the other what, what was the other point you mentioned? I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know if um, Pet Split had like special sanitation guidelines or pest control guidelines. I'm thinking of you know people are being transient bed bugs. Yeah, yeah. So we do recommend a monthly cleaning. It's not something that is currently required on the platform. I wouldn't be surprised if one day we do require it. But for right now, um, it's like at least at a minimum doing it on a monthly basis, a cleaning of the room. And when the members move in, they're paying a hundred dollar move in fee, as we call it, which is non refundable. Mm -hmm. And that's actually to cover the cost of their turn whenever that is. We've found that on average, a turn cost about $75. Um, because it's not like anything major is needed. Typically, it's just a deep clean of the room. And then also making sure that you're cleaning the shared space. So when that next person comes in, not only is the room clean, but also what they're walking into, that shared space is clean as well. That's in addition to your standard monthly clean, which we recommend. So you want to throw that into the budget as well, you know, kind of take that into consideration with these cleans. So I just, I want to be very transparent here on like everything that's required because um, you know, I can understand currently what you have with this month to month, it may not be something that you currently do, right? So uh, we just want to make sure managing expectations here uh, in, in full transparency. All about setting you up for success, right? Um, and if, if it's not a good fit, you know, that's why I want to, you know, make sure we, we, we figure that out before right. we move along. Now, one of the things I do want to mention is we do offer also access to telemedicine and job matching services as well. So in the event that they lose their job, We'll connect them with a resource that can actually help them place them in a new job. We do positive rent payment reporting as well. So that's a big one. So as they're paying on time, they're actually building their credit. Um, so that's another driver to getting that 98% collection rate. And uh, we actually even have a story of this woman in Atlanta uh, started about, you know, 2019, was living in a Padsplit for a year. And then eventually she was saved up enough to get her own home. And now she's actually an investor with Padsplit. She saw the value of the model and um, now she's an investor herself. Um, and then also when we do that income verification, we're going to see not only how much are they getting paid, but also at what frequency and what day. And that way we're going to tie their payment schedule um, to, to that, to, to their pay period. And that's, again, another driver to that 98% collection rate. Any questions regarding the services and the benefits that we include to members? Um, now, uh, we, we over here, what we do is we help people get credit repair if they don't got a 520 credit score to get lended. Is, do, you, do you guys help people with credit repair? I think you guys said something about you guys reporting reporting to the uh, to the credit uh, for, for the customer. But I wanted to ask, do you report to the business credit for the host? 
the business credit for the host yeah as far as like the same way that somebody getting you know the same way that people get uh get get a credit for uh for paying yeah you know, a way for us to do, do you guys use like nav or you know these these business these like duns and bradstreet are you guys reporting to these places that i might be want, that wanting to get some funding in the future with yeah so, so we'll yeah you'll have access to your earning statement the revenue that you're earning like your net profit and and you can use those statements then that you can you know share to potential lenders and and, and evaluate that but as far as because we're not we're not giving you credit we're we're just giving you income and and that revenue can then be used to gain access to credit okay yeah yeah man yeah yeah because what program who are you guys using to fix their credit well i guess to report to their credit for them oh and which which viewers are you using experience transunion all of them so that's a good question that i haven't had come up yet my i'm going to verify that my assumption is it's reported to all of them but i'll verify that i'll add that as a follow-up nice and yeah and ask them you know um you know you can let them know i told you yeah y'all gotta come up with a way to for, for the for the income to get reported to the to these business llc's for sure the same way you help out the customer i think that'd be dope yeah and like i said we can know and then give me a give me a line of credit to go get more houses to do more pass splits come on man <laughs> there you go yeah man yeah. yeah i'll ask about that i'll see i just i know typically we'll 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 you know you can use that uh income report that earnings report and then you can provide that to lenders and you can tell them hey look i got these you know 10 plus assets that are bringing in 3k whatever net revenue or net income and uh be able to use that but I'll, I'll ask about which bureaus we report to and also figure yeah. out the host yeah, we dig in deep we dig in deep that's yeah. it man that's what it's about today um cool any other questions what y'all thinking over there what you thinking mark what you thinking tom what you thinking of dear i think it sounds great just sounds good to me all right let's go e let's let's keep it pushing what you got yeah, let's keep it moving here man i would love to be able to wrap up uh round five but you know certainly want to make sure be like respectful of your time here um so this again this talks about what we what we include uh so we charge a 14 point sorry about that 14.75 percent platform fee and uh 12 of that is for our platform and then 2.75 percent is for the payment processing through stripe uh, and that's how, again, one of those drivers for that 98%. 14 point what? 14.75. Okay. So that's something that, that's how we run as a business. And Airbnb, for example, they charge 15. So we're actually 0.25% less than them. Now, my um, big question is, how is this going to make me money when I got to pay a DIA too, a 10%? Now, what, you know, how would that work? How, yeah how, how would an investor win with with all of this going on yeah and that's why i'm thinking like with with the configuration you have set up it's going to have to be at scale because you're going to have those tighter margins because like for example our sweet spot is six to seven or six to eight bedrooms that's where we try to shoot for when we're working with the single family homes in this case with mobile homes again margins are going to be smaller so we're going to have to see one if you do this at scale how are your expenses going to be with the furnishings and the locks and all this additional the fee the platform fee i don't i just don't want us to get too ahead of ourselves before right. we actually kind of look at the numbers and see how that looks like yeah man this right here is just a test of the of the water a taste of the water to see yeah. what it is. yes yeah that's yeah. why I'm glad i got all these specific people on here right now Y'all don't even know how much of a blessing this is to be able to have all y'all on here and just be able to just let y'all do what y'all do best, you know, for sure. Dude, I love the energy, man. Yeah. And I want to share more about this legal structure. So again, we have close to 7,000 units on our platform and zero have been removed with the legal structure we have in place. So it works and it mitigates your risk as an investor. Um, this kind of provides a diagram and it's pretty straightforward. Um, as far as how this works and again i'll send this deck out to everyone so that way you guys have access to it but this talks about what host or property managers are responsible for and what pad split is responsible for um 
to me, pretty much just break it down. It's, you know, you're going to be responsible for the listings, setting the pricing, the rules, the, and the locks, moving instructions. We provide the platform on which you can do that. Um, you get to, again, uh, review the move-ins that are coming in. If you'd like to accept those, we'll do the background checks, income verification, and provide you um, with, with the move-in tools needed. Setting up the house rules. Now, if there's a termination that's needed, you know, we'll initiate that conversation and um commute and then it'll be you can you can communicate directly with the members um if there's any escalations that you know are required from us we can step in uh we have our customer support team um we used to operate with this like key system where everybody would get three keys but we're starting we're transitioning out of that and going to that rating system where people where um members can rate each other and once they fall below a certain threshold um then that's when they are you know terminated off the platform so we are testing that and we are working on implementing it um, and then we'll do all the payment collections. So, and this just outlines the fees that are uh, included. So what I want to, what I got guide you to now is over to our website, um, padsplit.com. And you can go to the four hosts tab and the, and the, and the, and the ribbon, and then click on become a host. It's going to ask for some basic information, first name, last name, email. Um, and it's going to ask if you're already working with somebody from Padsplit. you can select my name. Um, but the reason you want to do it now, even before you are, you know, even at, ready to become an active host is because of the resources that we provide. So if you go into the resources, find an acquire here, um, you have your earnings calculator. So this is a good way to underwrite deals, to potentially see if it makes sense as a pad split. So I'll go ahead and open that up in a, in a new tab. And then the market data insights map. I don't think you're going to get a lot of use out of this because right now we only have markets where it's a core market. So we can say we're in Richmond, Virginia, um, but you know I know we don't have a lot. Uh, this is one of our newer markets, so we don't have many in this area. Atlanta, for example, is our um, our largest, our longest standing market, and our largest as well. So you can see here we have some really good numbers where you know 98% uh, occupancy, $195 per week, 183, 100% occupancy, 93%, 182. So as you kind of click around, you can see how it varies within every zip code. So if you plan on, you know, looking at Atlanta as potentially as an area to invest in for a pad split. Can you go towards the uh, Macon Albany area? Uh, Yeah, Macon's further south, right? Yeah. So we don't, again, we don't have anything here because it's technically outside of the core market. Mm -hmm. Um, So nothing currently because this only shows core market areas. It's cool. That might be some gold out there for sure. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but then this is the earnings calculator. So then this is where you can see, it, hey, compared to a single family rental, potentially what that would be. Um, so I will just go ahead and just use an example here from Atlanta, just so we can run through this briefly. But three three zero three one five. Three one five. You can charge way more in Atlanta for rentals, because man, like I said, I'm in the dirty south. I'm by the Bible Belt, you know. It's a little, it's, a, it's about the cheapest you get where I'm at. Can't find yeah, it. Yeah. 5,000. I, I hear you on that. You yeah. You can't get it for 5,000. Yeah. So, and then this would, you know, again, show you if you added additional bedrooms, um, you know, let's say we add one additional bedroom. You said the market rate per month is $1,000. Mm -hmm. um, you might as well just, 50000 for a brand new one. Really, really not, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you got to do it. You got to do it that way. Just three bedroom, one bath. Yep. Okay. Well, I yeah. mean, they do got three bedroom single wise, like I said. So that did, that would be it there. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're yeah we're we're kind of running the assumption if we added a bedroom, potentially what that difference would be with pad split. Um, what if we just decided no more living room, like you said, and make it like a little den area? So make so up and up, make the original three a uh, three bedroom because they got three bedroom. Uh, but now I'll leave it like that because I said the uh, average was uh, two ones. So, yeah. 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 Let's go ahead and go with the majority that mm -hmm. you have. Because, um, again, it's we could modify these numbers to make them work, but then we're not being honest about the numbers. And this is where mm -hmm. really this is where we start looking to see what makes sense. So um, utilities, again, that would be up to the tenant. Um, concessions, that's like bad debt. So that's something that it's part of any investment. You always have to take that account. General rule of thumb is just putting that at 3%. Um, 
So maintenance, you know, what would you say is like the monthly maintenance on these, man? So on um, the used ones, man, I'm going to be honest, we don't handle none of the maintenance once we give uh, over the uh, rights to the tenant. Oh, really? It's up to the tenant to... Yeah, that's for the ones we don't own. But for the ones I do own, um, like I said, you just got to have everything in order. So I say just have like an extra 100, 150 to the side for uh for anything. That, but it, once you got the AC, once you got the uh, the AC and the, uh, the heat, Sit in the power and the plumbing together on a mobile home, you locked in. You, mm. locked in. you locked in for a minute, just like a regular home. I mean, that's okay. why we get in some of these homes, they be 70s and 80s. You mm. know? So, yeah, I, I think about 100, 150, about 150 bucks just in case. So, um, um, 50 what bucks. About yard work and pest control. Are you guys take care of that yard work and pest control? Um, so, if we, if we, the part, if we speaking for the part owner, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your cost for that per per person per, per lot? I think and, and because they so next to each other, it's almost like the person probably getting paid, let's say five hundred uh a park. Let's say five hundred for the park until for the park. Yeah, okay. let's say five hundred for like a twenty bad park or something like that. So let's break it down to about another uh fifty bucks a month. Yeah, let's say like yeah, fifty bucks a month. Yeah, that's conservative. Insurance? Are you paying any insurance on these places, or is that you can like make the tenant pay rental insurance or homeowners insurance? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, are you paying the taxes, or is tenant paying taxes? Uh, we'll pay the taxes uh, for sure. What's like ballpark estimate on those? Well, oh, mobile home is the cheapest tax ever, but it just be the land. So you know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like forty bucks. I mean, um. Most I ever paid with like seventy five bucks on a uh, on a mobile home. That's really? Like, oh, like for the year? Yeah, for the year, for sure. Oh shit, man! I'll put ten bucks in there. That's yeah. yeah. When we're looking when we're working with the house. That's not for the land under. Hmm. Okay. What's the land? What's the land tax on that? Um, it could be. Let's just just go with a standard standard land tax. Um, it'll be about five hundred a year. Okay, so let's say about five hundred a year, just in case. So we're looking at like fifty bucks in total. Yeah. Um, turn costs. I'll put like twenty bucks a month. You're setting aside for turns. If... Put a, put put the same as a single family, because I know it sounds easier, but it's all the same shit. Oh, okay. You all know right. what I'm saying? It's all it's all the same things. Yeah. Property, um, management so, need, property management gonna need something in it, huh? Property management gonna need something in it, owner. Oh yeah. See, so what was it? What was the property management that you, that you charged for that? Yes, yeah, she, she charged ten percent. Ten percent. So like, if we're if it's a hundred bucks, and we make it three thousand, she want three hundred. But so, per 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 unit though, right? It's a thousand dollars per month. It's probably easier to manage these people now that she's using a certain interface. So I might be able to get a cheaper rate. Okay. But I don't know. I don't know. It might be it might be more more volume coming in, so it might be a different, you know. Because it's a it's a thousand dollars for the entire unit, right? All three, all two bedrooms that are in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you know, let's say you do make it. Um, so that's okay. So two fifty a week. Um, I, I don't know if you could charge more than like ninety dollars per per week, you know. So if yeah, that's, that's, I'm thinking like a hundred a week. Hundred a week, yeah. Let's just do it a flat hundred. And let's say, you know, let's just match the same vacancy, eight percent, three percent concession. Utilities. I mean, what would you think be the monthly utility cost on one of these things? Um, they usually build a build a uh, build a uh, the property person back if they got the rubs. Hey Tom, don't they usually build back? How much? How much a, a property a tenant uh, monthly bill usually is? Probably no more than 30, 40 bucks a month. Talking about utilities? Yeah, yeah. Um, where some of them are included, sometimes they're included. That you know, if we have a well, we're not billing them for the well, but electric, yeah, probably about 30, 40 bucks. You know, where where we can if we can get it sub metered, we're charging them. If we can't. You know, we just have to roll it with it. <laughs> okay. And 
maintenance capex what's that okay okay yeah, yeah. that's gonna so, you, so i mean i'll probably be a little bit more because you're gonna have that additional bedroom so let's say one 125 um contract services that's going to be relatively the same because it's just the yard work and pest control um insurance so you said that that was something that the tenant was paying for yeah usually the tenants pay for that but we don't know how that's going with now that we're going through pass flip so yeah we need to get homeowners insurance so yeah yeah so what mm -hmm. what is like a typical rate on a on a two one for homeowners insurance Monthly, call it call it fifty dollars. Fifty yeah. bucks. Okay. I'm about to say that about fifty. We'll keep property tax the same. Um, what do you think for property management? You're keeping the same at a hundred. She gonna want ten percent. So if I make ten thousand, she want a thousand. If I make a thousand, she want a hundred. All so right. What we whatever we about to project is what we need to put in property management. Yeah. So weekly. So okay. So if we do three. So yeah, it'll be like okay. So if it's a hundred. 400 we got three it's 1200 so we'll do 120. um i'm gonna just put keep this at let me just keep this at zero for right now because i want to just more so look at the cash flow so assuming these numbers it, it looks like a 13 percent increase um compared to a single family rental after expenses so when we look at this and we expand and you know we, we expand this um you know, looking at 492 versus 554. And that's with the assumption of the expenses that we put here. You can hover over, right? take a look at that. So I think the consideration here, again, this doesn't include furnishings. This doesn't include the Wi-Fi locks. This does include our platform fee that we charge. Um, and it also does include the transaction fee. But even so, I, I think, again, we always want to shoot for at least 50% or more. Heck yeah. Because otherwise you may actually be losing out on money. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's where my concern was is because the margins are, 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 are smaller here compared to what we, what our standard homes that we work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's tweak the rooms and then we're tweaking the rooms make, will make us understand. Okay. If we get a double wide, this is what we do. If we get a, a, you know, maybe this, maybe this strategy is for double wides only, you know, maybe this strategy is for uh, ones with land that will allow us to add rooms, you know? Yeah. You know, maybe it flows into a whole nother, ca a, a certain, a specific category within mobile homes to get that 50% return. Yeah. So let me do a single on um, this. This is a single single wide unit is that what you call them yeah then we call that a single wide unit yeah all right and now let's do double wide unit now double wise is four bedrooms already huge okay. huge living room and kitchen you can damn near turn you can damn near look up a double ride real quick floor plan on google real quick like just look it up yeah I'm about to look it up right now double wide yeah e let's turn it up let's see double wide unit mobile home what plan and man i've been working with uh clayton homes uh helping them sell the use homes they sure got four this. bedrooms a little <laughs> retreat yeah i mean you could probably make like an additional like from a four can bedroom on screen can you bring it to the uh to the, to the oh window? yeah 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 let me show you what i'm looking at here this is, this is what i'm looking at i don't know again they got a couple different floor plans but you see in the size and all that and uh, you know yeah like for example like you can put a wall here and like like a, like an l wall here so there's still like a, a hallway that goes into here right. into the porch so you got one room here um you could potentially again seal this off you have a room right here that goes into the kitchen so that's two rooms right there right that you could do you can create you can even seal a oh, three a matter of fact because then you can seal this off here and then this is a master bedroom this is a bedroom here as well that, that that's um, the one that you put the slice on that's a bedroom the other one, yeah, one two you're looking at three just looking like a seven bedroom so this could this i think this could be a better use case scenario okay. now we make sense mm -hmm, with the double wide 
Yeah. Film. So let me just go ahead and just run this real quick. And it works so good because listen, a lot of those people got into those Clayton homes, uh, those Clayton home mortgages and stuff like that, and they and they ready to go get a regular single family house or something like that with the double wides. And they and like I said, when K Sign was on here earlier, we literally got somebody right now who won a subject to us. They they double wide, uh, four bedroom, two bath. They owe they owe like fifty. It's worth eighty. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And trying to see how do it. She owe like fifteen hundred a month on it, so I'm like, ain't no way in hell nobody gonna pay that a month and then pay lot rent. But she got somebody to do that, and now it's about yo. Maybe we need to when we do take it over, we need to come with implement a new strategy. Mm. Yeah, that's what we, that's why I'm, I'm thinking this right here would definitely work with the double wise. The double wise looking promising, running numbers. That's them right there. What do they usually go for when you're renting them? The double now, wide? double wide, we can probably put about an extra two, three hundred dollars on top of that per month. You can get about thirteen hundred a month for a double wide. All right, how much do they usually go for the cost of them? Um, so use, uh, I see the double wise can go for uh, you know, maximum forty, fifty thousand dollars used. And then, um, brand new man, you can get a damn a double wide for two hundred bands if you want to spend it. You know, but average the, though, like let's say on average, what's like double wide, k? Um, cheapest when I seen double wide probably was about a hundred k, like you said, about a hundred, hmm. probably eighty, probably eighty to be realistic. You know, but one hundred. Matter of fact, let's just keep it at a hundred with setup fees and come on, man. You know, so we're gonna keep same numbers here um maintenance you know let me see let me pull up what we had i think good thing i downloaded that because it's so crazy i got a guy right now we just finished uh we just finished demoing um uh seven mobile homes and he bringing in brand new mobile homes so i might be and he he might want to buy a brand new double wide and put on one of those lots that he planned on selling off you know, oh okay for real he might want to keep one in cash flow one of them things yeah i'm just trying to figure out like what we're doing right now it's time to run numbers that's what it is about man we're just trying to see what we can make here i'm going to keep the average weekly room price the way it is again the goal here is going to have those additional bedrooms it's supposed, it's supposed to do 50 percent regardless yeah mm -hmm. utilities are probably gonna be a little bit more i'd say like 80 would we'll double that um maintenance a little bit more people so we'll do 175. Right. contract is gonna be the same insurance property taxes a little bit more because it's um bigger property more value um and then property management so now with seven bedrooms uh let's see 700 times four she's taking 10 percent. so we're looking at 280 for property management by these changes all right so now this is starting to look a lot better right with these double wads we can see now you got a 131 percent increase man get out of here now what about that number that you've had put zero on the renovation oh so uh this you know, is I'm sorry. that's so that's that's gonna be yeah, that's not going to affect your not net operating income, but that it, that will be for your unlevered return on cost. So let's say to convert it as a path split, if we're making those three additional bedrooms, let's say it's like, what would you say? What I mean, like, I mean, 10, like 8K, would you say just in this example that we had where we, you know, add a wall here, add a wall here. or Yeah, um, that, 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 that are for sure. I think 8,000 for sure. Hell, I'll do it myself for 8,000. They get the trick. <laughs> yeah. you do it for eight thousand. <laughs> Ain't that right, Tom? We out there. Yeah, we'll yeah, figure it out. You could probably throw a wall up for five hundred bucks with a door in it, you know. <laughs> Caught man, what drilling hand, ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mom's the builder out here, man. <laughs> cool. Well, no, nah, man, that's amazing. Right, so, so break down how we how how was that possible? Just because the, the you know, let, let's break that down yeah 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 absolutely so really what what happened here was now we had more revenue coming in from more rooms right so now we're still charging a hundred dollars per room but now we have seven rooms that are bringing in revenue um times four uh 
Hold on. It's uh 100 times 7 times 4. 4.3 is the calculation that we use um, because it's on a weekly basis, right? So there's that additional time frame of the additional days um, throughout the year. So we do about times 4.3. So that's how we get to the 3,033 gross. And then there's the vacancy um, concessions that we put at 3%. This was, I think, 8% that we did. Um, and then with the expenses, Again, everything is listed out here, including the uh, property management fee, which was higher this time, pad split fee, the transaction fee. We did a little bit higher on the property taxes compared to that single single wide. Um, but even with these higher expenses, you see now you're bringing in more than double as a standard single family rental that you're renting out for compared to 1300. Right, that was that's how we ran that assumption. Yeah, because I ain't gonna lie, in the mobile home parks, you're gonna get thirteen hundred or just at the crib or on a piece of land you might got with a little lot, you just throw the double wide on there. You go you gonna get thirteen hundred all day. And I, like I said, I'm not even speaking for the I say thirteen hundred in my area. I'm not talking about Georgia. Like Georgia a whole nother beast. Like there's yeah. people out there. It is not a million, it's not millions of people out here where I'm at. I mean, it's some, but it ain't like a metro, you know. Of course, some numbers are off, but yeah. What you think? Well, well, we, yeah, I don't want this to throw you off here. I mean, this doesn't affect it because then again, we manually input everything. So this correct, is correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, we all we inputted this on our own. So I'll I'll send you this report so you can take a look at it and you know compare it to that single family that we ran. But from what I can see here, the way this is going to work is if we had those uh double wides and we added three bedrooms to them mm. and i mean let me let me save this one as a three bedroom and then i'll see you put how that compares if we only added two bedrooms yeah that's right double wide plus three bedrooms tom what are your brain doing what is your brain doing <laughs> i'm thinking about we you know we got some three bedrooms three ones that rent for, you know, including the lot rent, rent for like 700 bucks. So, you know, if we convert those to a four one, oh, man, rent, for, <laughs> rent them for a hundred dollars a room, you know, we're looking at, we're looking at a big increase, right? We're looking at $1,600 as opposed to 700. So, you know, right. and then the additional expenses, obviously, but we're still, you know, more than doubling our revenue. So yeah, it's, now, it, it definitely now, makes sense as long as there's a demand for it. These numbers is for double wives that got converted to seven bedrooms, not yeah. single wives that got converted to three bedrooms. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking you know along the same lines, but I'm thinking about a th a three bedroom single wide converting to a four four bedroom single wide still, but but going from our seven hundred dollar rent to a hundred dollars oh. a week per room. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So so you know not putting all the numbers in, but just putting you know rough numbers in my head going from from 700 a month to 1600 a month just on the rent number you know so yeah there's there's definitely um value in it and like i said as long as we got the demand in the area you know so we do have the ability um if we bring in a couple of trailers to try it on a couple and if it if it seems like it's you know if it goes well with those you just keep adding right so right exactly so even even just adding two bedrooms you'll still see an 83 percent increase so 1200 versus that 680 and i i didn't even adjust the numbers i kept them as is with that like three bedroom so expenses may be a little bit overstated um so you may be looking at close to like a 95 percent you know 100 percent increase I like, um, it you got it. I like it where you got it man yeah i think you figured out the formula man i think this is how we can make it work yeah, so it gotta be the three. It gotta be the three bedrooms. Uh, the, it, so, so Tom, you thinking you thinking it works for your your single wives because of your area and the current rates, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it with us being at you know seven hundred dollars a month rent on a on a three mm. bedroom, you know, we if, if we can get a hundred dollars a week, you know, if the if the because a hundred dollars a week seems really cheap, right? You know, as long as somebody in the area is looking for something like that. Right. It makes sense. So, and yeah, hundred dollars a week seems like nothing. You know, it seems like people be eating that up all day. So, <laughs> yeah, it, like, it sounds so good. It's crazy. Like what? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, we do have the added expenses of of the of the Wi-Fi, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water, Wi-Fi, washer for honey. You know, like this this to me becomes a, a, a whole separate business, honestly. Like, you know, we keep our mobile home park operating the same way it does where we're we're not looking really to own the homes we're looking just to own the land and have somebody rent a lot from us but this opens up a whole separate business to me where i can buy a lot buy a double wide maximize Mm -hmm. buy a lot buy a double wide maximize well well, even even keeping it within our park right like if if i say okay like you know tom and tom and tim we have a you know, we have the mobile home park business. Well, then I can have Tom or I can go to one of my other friends and say, hey, I have an investment opportunity for you. You buy this mobile home, you move it into my park, you pay me, you know, $400 a month to rent the lot and then do pad split on it. Yes, right? sir. You, yeah. So I can, I can bring other homes into my lot if I can, you know, roll this this marketing and this this uh this business if if i can explain this business to somebody else or have you guys explain this business to somebody else i can bring homes in that way you know by providing this opportunity to them for sure i like it man oh yeah yeah i I think one of our one of our challenges might be parking though (laughs) right yeah that's something you're gonna (laughs) want to consider yeah that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, that's something we want to take. So, I mean, our members, and again, this is in core markets. I don't know how it's going to be other markets, but only about 45, 50% actually have a vehicle. So when we're working with homeowners, we say, hey, you know, in that parking space, if you're going to have six bedrooms, try to have at least three parking spots that people can easily access. You, you ideally yeah. don't want them to have to line up behind each other because then that can turn into a detriment to the member experience, but that's a good point, Tom. Definitely something you want to keep in consideration. Because right now, yeah. in my head, I'm only seeing two. They they got enough for two cars everywhere right now. Every mm-hmm. every car I've been to is only enough for two cars. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the tricky part. But we can yeah. we can try to figure something out. Yeah, that's that. something we'll have to think through. Um, Everybody, right? Part. Yeah, we're gonna think about that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But well, every problem's got a solution, you know. If we gotta if we gotta add more parking pads to make it work, we can just do that, you know. So is street parking an option? Is is that maybe something they could do? Or is yeah, it within the parks, you know, we, we, we try to keep keep the streets clear and try to keep, you know, two V like like you're saying, two vehicles per per space. Um, but all all these parks that we just purchased, we're looking at going in and kind of improving the roads anyway, so we can just, you know add tell our paver hey add a couple more parking spots to you know some of these some of these lots here extend the driveway a little longer or maybe even i'm thinking now like having a parking area right maybe dedicating a little space just for parking that people can walk to if they wanted but i don't know i gotta kind of kind of think creatively on how i can go about it so that way in the event like you have those four bedrooms or five bedrooms maybe having at least two to three spots that they can easily access yeah 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 Cool, yeah, man. I got a question. You may have said yeah. this already, but um, because I did jump off a couple times, I had a couple other calls come in. But as far as the room pricing, do you do like do are all the rooms priced the same, or can you set different prices for different rooms? Yeah, absolutely. You can set different prices for different rooms, and uh, okay. we, we if you have like a private entrance or a private bathroom, that's considered a premium room, and you can charge anywhere from about fifteen to twenty percent, twenty five percent more for those. If it has okay. both of them, then you basically have like almost a little mini studio um, and you can charge anywhere from about 25 to 50% more for those rooms. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, but I would say fa- factors you want to consider real quick. I just want to, before we move on, factors you want to consider is like the size of the room, right? So if a room is bigger than some of the others, you can charge more for that. Um, if, uh, if there's maybe like easier access to the front door or kitchen or something like that. You can, you, you get to set the pricing as the host. You decide on what that is. This is your business. We just provide the platform. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, very cool. Yeah, man. Cool, I'm man. More questions, man. If you can, you just copy and paste those questions. You just email them back to me. All right. Yeah, you, you got it. And everything. But if you, you know, I don't know if you can send for somebody else to answer for you, but. Yeah, no, I'll get some answers on those. Um, 
And then I'm going to include these reports to you as well that I generated so you can kind of get an idea based off the different configurations. And I guess next steps, I guess, just let me know when you decide on what the, you know, if, if there's, let's maybe schedule another meeting, uh, perhaps two, a week or two from now, so we can touch base. And yeah, and yeah. I'm going to actually go to the park in about a week and, and meet with Tom out there. Okay. So, yeah, plan on doing some content creation and getting some stuff started anyway. So uh, that'd be a good time to kind of chime back in, man. Um, it's near your area, man. Um, you you said you in Florida though. If you don't got like a Georgia rep or something like that who can't come see your boy, you know that'd be great. You know for them to come out there and come get some of this content with us trying it with the mobile homes. Yeah, you know? it's a Macon, you said. Yeah, Macon in Albany, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. no, we don't have anybody in Macon, but um, you can even in Atlanta. Them. Tell them we'll give them some gas. You know we'll pay them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me let me. I'll connect with them. We got two reps out there. We got two, so I'll I'll see if they're available. But I'll you know I'll pass pass this by the team. So. As far as like Tom, considering this, you kind of want to start off with a couple just to, to see how it goes. Is that right? Yeah, you know, and, and it could be it could go one of two ways. It could be like uh, it could be a home that we already have in the park that we own, or it could be a home that someone else owns in the park. Right. Like I, I can see it going either way. Um, you know, I might I might go to my partners in these parks and say, hey, I'm going to buy one of these homes and this is what I'm going to do with it. Mm. right i'm gonna bring one in myself and and do pads put on it and pay the community the lot rent and you know go from there um so yeah i mean it could go either way you know it's just a matter of yeah seeing if it makes sense but i guess i guess the question is how many units do you need or how many rooms do you need to make it a core market <laughs> really cool yeah market is in the location right so core markets um I, I don't know oh, the exact no. threshold. I think it's about a hundred that we need, a hundred hundred rooms okay. before it crosses into a core market. Um, but I know I know they're working on perhaps even rolling something out on a national level, but it, it's it's not there yet. It's gonna take some more time just because there's so much interest from people all over. So I think it's only a matter of time before we start having this just nationwide. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hey, man, you know what I'm most excited for is finding out if Adia can get us some vouchers for these rooms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ropes hands. That'd be something, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, and I'll, I'll That's going to be amazing, that. though, because, man, that's the number one voucher list that is the three bedrooms and the one bedroom. The two bedrooms and the three bedrooms, they kind of go if they got a family. You know, families can get into three bedrooms easy. But that one bedroom be usually veteran vouchers, right? Mm. So I actually got a guy that worked with Foot Market. He is a social worker. He worked with the veterans. This is, I think, I think this right here is going to be ridiculous if we can figure out how to utilize the voucher. And even if we got to get these people, you know, on board or through pass, but even though they do got the voucher, it's all about making sure the funds can get released to the right individual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the availability of one bedrooms is very low. There's not a lot of one bedroom availability anywhere. So, so you can see, yeah. So SSI will be approved for a weekly room rate equal to two thirds their weekly income. Um, w two or ten ninety nines will have a weekly room rate equal to half their verified weekly income. Um, so it doesn't mention anything about Section Eight. Yeah, and she worked with the Housing Authority, so she. About she she wanted to direct us, so she won't get that answer, and it's gonna be real. That's why she talked like that. So, everybody awesome. who watching part two, section eight slash pass split slash mobile home <laughs> slash adventure game changer. That's <laughs> it, <man. laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love man. it. Let's do it. Amazing. I think that really wraps it up, man. I'm really good. If I got any more questions, man, I'm gonna have to just text you or something, bro. I'm done. Yeah, hit me up, man. Let me know. Um, you got my number. I'll work on getting this follow out follow up out to you by tomorrow. Um, and then, um, yeah, man. Well, let me know once you you guys are you know you guys connect and we can reconnect. Yeah, me and you'll definitely talk some more, man. I want to talk to you more on the influencer side of things, you know, because uh, I, I I introduced you to the A team, man. I got another A team that's ridiculous. I, I, the, the people who couldn't come. Yeah. Oh man, I love life. Gotta love the folks you get into it with, man. Do you so, make it? You do you make it down here to Jacksonville at all? Florida, yeah, man. I got family all in Florida. Yeah, 
All right. Yeah, well, Jamaican, so you know, if you're from Jamaica, if you Jamaican, your family go to New York or Florida. I'm like the rare one that got stuck in the Carolinas, like looking like where you like, you like you got stuck halfway, man. You were on your way up to New York and you just you know you got yeah, stuck there, man. I was, <laughs> I was born in New York too, so I ended up halfway. It's crazy. Oh man. Just wow. ain't ready there. Yeah, you know what? Fast look about to get me a little spot in Miami. I'm headed out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's a market <laughs> that we're trying to kick up. So cool, man. Well, it's if you ever in chat, it's the mobile home know. spot down here, though, man. On the on dealing with the mobile homes on the south side of the you know, this side of the world. This yeah, here, no, there's North Carolina, South Carolina. It's a lot of stuff going on out here. Mm -hmm. but in Georgia, though, y'all started at the right place, I swear. It, it, the, the traffic there is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, that's why we started in Atlanta. We knew it was the greatest potential there. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, fellas, it was a pleasure, man. Thanks for uh, bringing the A team and uh, looking forward to reconnecting another time, man. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Go get you something good to eat. eat. Really? Yeah, man. I'm hungry, dude. I, I, we'll eat, man. Whew, it's been a day. I tell you, so it's been, I mean, like every single day, it's, you know, constant, man. We got so much interest, a lot of people. We're actually looking on bringing on more people because, you know, there's just an influx of, of demand right now for, for Pat Split with. Pace and Jesse and all these guys hopping out. I already board. know. That's I'm like. Hey, listen, I, I promise you. Between yeah. me and Mark, we know everybody in the mobile home space who got all of the influence who really would love to see them numbers that we saw today. Mm. So that's why I said that, uh, we were going to take it step by step. Like we yeah. said, this is the first one. This is part one of understanding. And then once we implement and once we roll it all the way out, man, like I said, it's going to be amazing because even Tom is a part of a, a huge community of people with thousands of units. Like, wow. you know, like Tom is a big goat, too. Like, you know, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> well, that's it, man. I mean, you guys could set a precedent here, you know, and so that that's what it's all about. Just see, you know, how we can make this work. And I mean, right now, just kind of in this brief discussion we've had and adjusting the numbers a little bit, it, it looks like, you know, there's potential here for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing guys. Thank All right. Thank well, you. We'll, All right. Don't yeah, forget no to problem. send me that recording. Send me this recording to my email so I can chop it up for a little episode with with some sneak peeks to part one. Oh, okay. You'll do that. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm about to yeah. put it on my Instagram, tag you and everything. We're about to go crazy. Yeah, I'm yeah. Big, big REI hey, growth, man. Tag me on there. I'm big REI growth. That's the that's the that's the handle. So yeah, big, I'm about to follow you right big now. Big REI, yeah, big REI growth. I uh, I just created that separate account a couple weeks ago. <laughs> My boy said big REI. But yeah, because they yeah. some some people call me Big E. You know, that's the nickname, yeah. man. So uh, it's like you know, what? let me just do big REI growth, man. Big about the growth energy, man. I know you can't yeah. see my background here. Let me turn this off so you can see it, but. This is my growth room, man. This is my studio right here. I got like, you know, yeah, I got the plants hey. in the background. Alexa, turn on the joy. We've been going crazy today, man. Boom. So turn coming with <laughs> Y'all be ready. Turn up the lights, man. Yeah, big time in here. What we doing? Yeah. <laughs> you already know. Bad split, baby. Yeah, I'm about to attack you right now. Yeah, man. Go for it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. You said it was a uh, big wet, bro? Big, big REI, real estate REI, investing, REI, big REI, REI growth. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, right there. Yeah, man. Uh, we're going. We're going to go crazy, man. Let's just take it one day at a time. I'm stoked, man. Um, I love the energy that you bring, and uh, just the you know the 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 creative thinking. Always trying to think how we can find a solution. You know. Yeah, so. man. That's what it's all about. I feel like in life, I it is. Figure out what you're good at. I'm good at putting it together. I'm creating you know making lemonade out of lemons man you know and mm -hmm. people see problems we see opportunity that's what it's about being an investor mm -hmm. quick question how yeah. often are you in the gym buddy um i so i don't go to the gym a lot but i teach yoga i'm a yoga teacher man so All right, that's cool you you get a pass uh, yeah dude, dude i'll tell you man yo go into a hot yoga studio brother and i promise you, you're gonna be barely walking out like guys i used to go big heavy into the gym man i was going five six days a week and then I was like, I lose losing my range of motion. I felt mm -hmm. so really tight. And dude, I'm stronger now just using my like my body weight and calisthenics and things like that oh, than man, I was when I was. Is. Calisthenics, baby. That's yeah. What I'm doing. That's all I'm doing in there. Sauna, good calisthenics, a little strength training. 
Yeah, you know? bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, man. Like I was, I was working out today. I was, I mean, I go to the gym, but I don't use the weights. I'll do like weighted push-ups, weighted dips, mm. um, things like that. But I don't generally do like you know anything on the squat racks or anything like that. I just do my own kind of body work stuff. Right, that mobility is everything they say. Bro, it's really being able to get around, get up. Can you touch something? Can you grab something off the ground? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Look, I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, like being able to pop into like a single leg squat, right? Coming down yeah. and then like coming back up, things like oh. that. Man, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you got, hey, that's the calisthenics, man. That, that, that's that's what, it. Man. Longevity, brother. Yeah. Longevity, man. Health is wealth, man. That's all I needed to hear right there, man. You Health got it. Yeah, yeah. Are you a big gym goer? Do you go to the gym often? I, I just go, I just go hit it real quick 30, 40 minutes every morning. I usually hit the sauna for about 10 minutes. I do, Dude, like, I love the sauna, man. Uh, incline push ups, you know, get up, get down, pull up as much as I can. Then I hit the dumbbells a couple of times. Man, I lost so much weight in the last like four months, bro. Yeah, ridiculous, bro. Like, Amazing. Yeah. I, I was, I was getting big, man. I was getting the, the man titties, man. I had to get them. She was like, I, I got to do something about this. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it helped me mentally, though. It just, um, oh, like, yeah, dude. On days that I don't work out, I mean, I feel off, you know, so it, it helps you just be better at work. It helps you be better in your relationships and all and everything in life. So definitely, definitely understand that, man. Yeah, man. I like you. We're going we're gonna, to see you in Florida soon. Hey, man, we're going to do big stuff, man. That's what's all big REI growth energy, man. Only big energy here. Let's go and hey, make sure you re- repost that story. Send me this. I will, tonight. man. Yeah, I got I got a little quite a bit to catch up on here, but I definitely will, brother. Yep. Yes, sir. All right, All right everybody. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Yes, sir.